the political class in Kenya has now been threatened by the Gen Z movement and Raila Amolo Odinga and Dr. William Samoe Ruto now have combined forces together to try to quell down the situation. Remember, Raila Amolo Odinga campaigned to become the president in the year 2022 and one of the reasons he lost is because he got the baggage of Uhuru Migai Kenyatta and that was what was used against him. And I see he is still yet to learn and uh, Dr. William Samuel Ruto has decided now to go down with him. This is based on the reaction about his statement that he wants to dialogue or he wants Gen Z's to dialogue with the government on the issues that are affecting them, yet the Gen Z's are not interested in dialogue. The Gen Z's are very clear that they want the president to implement that which they have told him to implement. So in this video, I want us to critically assess uh, that a situation and see its implication in our current political situation, especially the fact that now people have refused to listen even to Raila Amolo Odinga. If you are new to our channel, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that we can continue with this kind of conversation. Remember, at the Socrates TV, we explore, discuss, and discover the hidden stories shaping our political landscape. Uh, now, but I'm happy to. Uh, confirm that uh, we have had consultations and after extensive consultations uh, we have agreed that um, uh, a, a dialogue is the way forward out of the crisis that we are having today in our country. We have agreed that uh, we give uh, people an opportunity to be heard to express themselves, to come out with the grievances which are actually ailing our country today, so that uh, a lasting solution can be found. Uh, because of um, restrictions of resources or limitation of resources, we've agreed that um, everybody else will bear their costs of coming to this meeting. But we want it to be a really very engaging conversation on the way forward so that we deal with the fundamental issues that are affecting our society today. Now, for those who may not be previewed with what is happening in Kenya, is that there has been a protest in the country, Kenya, whereby young people referred by the name Gen Z, that is Generation Z, have been crying and calling out government and political class for failing to actually do what they were elected to do. And Dr. William Samuelito has used different strategies to try to quell this situation. Among them was bringing in soldiers. He used sometimes goons. And at some point, they started forming what they refer to as by uh, a task force which were to try to look into issues. All the attempts have failed. And now we are seeing that today when the bill, the, the, the IEBC bill was being ascended to, Raila Amolo Odinga, the opposition leader with the Ruto, were together. And uh, this was based on the fact that the amendment of the bill was based on the agreement of the two. Now, when they were today together, Raila Amolo Odinga now urged the Gen Z to come out and actually a uh, dialogue uh, with the president in regard to uh, that which uh, they have been complaining about. And as you've seen in the video, Raila Molo Odinga said that, in fact, he said that they have already agreed we. And people are asking the question, when did he agree uh, with this Denzis to go and represent them? The constant um, thing that the Gen Z have been saying and emphasizing is that they are leaderless, they are partyless, and they are tribeless in the sense that they are only united by the specific problems that are affecting them. And they are also united by their age set and the period within which they were brought into this world. Therefore, they do not have any specific individual to represent them as the leader. And the fact that there ha have been some people who thought that the person who was behind this movement was Raila Mondo Oding and ODM party, now that has been quashed and it is now very clear that no any specific individual is representing the Gen Z. And uh, uh, as you can see on various social media 
up there is a reaction whereby people are saying that Raila Amolo Odinga should have distanced himself from this issue and only given the Gen Z's knowledge or wisdom on how to run them, but not to tell them what to do. Neither they do not want him to represent them. In fact, the fact that they have now grouped together with Ruto, the people who were against Ruto and the people who were against Saila have now uh, uh, united together and are actually uh, on uh, what I could refer to as a common cause, which is to ensure that there is good governance. Remember, these people are not just complaining for the sake of complaining. There have been times when Raila Amolo Odinga disagreed with other leaders, that is starting with Moi, Kibaki, and even Uhuru Migai Kenyatta, and all through there was dialogue. And this dialogue did not really achieve any substantial effect apart from them now start working together. It is what was actually referred to as the handshake government. And now people, having not seen the fact that dialogue cannot work, they are not interested in dialogue. What they really want is the president to actualize what he he actually promised the people. And now the fact that uh, Ruto has brought in Raila Amolo Odinga to try and talk on his behalf or to try and quell down the protest, it simply means that he is feeling indeed the political pressure and he is now resorting now to use this strategy to try and call the political uh, class, especially those who are supporting Raila Amolo Odinga and who are against him, thinking that he will now be able to neutralize them. But I think this could be seen as a tactical mistake to both Raila Amolo Odinga and Dr. William Samuel Ruto. Why am I saying so? This is because for Raila Amolo Odinga, it was a good opportunity or a good chance to leave his political career saying he has inspired a generation who are now living up to his principles of ensuring that there is good reform, there is good government, and the country is headed in the direct direction. For Dr. William Samuel Ruto, already he had a problem and it will have been difficult to come out, but he has actually worsened it in the sense that now the people now are believing that this political class has no any good intention with them, but it is only up to benefit their interest. And remember, Dr. William Samuel, when he became the president of the Republic of Kenya, he ran on what he referred to as dynasty vice hustlers, whereby he said there is a political class that is Urmigai Kenyatta and uh, Raila, who had grouped themselves against the common minority, who he called himself hustler, the chief hustler, now representing the common minority. Now, you can see paradoxically, they have now come together and it is the same thing they have regrouped as a political class. Now it will be very easy for any candidate who will oppose them, assuming that Raila Amolo Odinga supports Suto, and say that this is the political class which is actually oppressing us. So I think this is a very huge, huge mistake, not only start tactical, but it's also a strategic mistake that can be used against them, not only now, but even in future. And I have seen there are some few leaders who are in Azimiola Moja who have distanced themselves from the dialogue talk. Among them is Eugene Wamalua and Martha Karua. And the reason they are giving is that dialogue is only but a trap to delay the things that have been affecting Dr. William Samueto so that he can get time or he can get time to re-strategize and continue doing what he has been doing. So the implication of this, uh, as I see, first of all, it discredits Raila Amolo Odinga and it removes him from the picture in the sense that now the Gen Z's will not associate him with their struggle. First of all, they liked him, if, as you've seen at, the, at some point, they even posted him saying he should not speak anything, he should keep quiet. Of course, they, by then they told him to keep quiet, now they are doing what he has been doing for years. Now the fact that he has, they told him to do something, but he's now going against what they told him, now they will feel like he does not even care about them, and he does not care about their interests as a generation which will make them not even to trust his sentiments henceforth. It will be very difficult for these Gen Z's or these protesters to really trust what Raila Amolo Odinga tells them because they now see that Raila Amolo Odinga is already together with Ruto, whom they regard as the person who has been oppressing them by taxes and actually coming up with... Uh, policies that are not favorable to Mananchi and even his government structure is also not inspiring hope. Remember, 
Aila Molo diga had an opportunity to go and tell like, Ruto just to do the right thing. Among them, the Gen Z's want him to dissolve the cabinet. The cabinet, in, as it is currently constituted, does not inspire confidence, not only to the Gen Z's, but to any other person in the country. The reason why the older generation are not calling out the government is because they fear. They fear because they grew up during the Moi era where fear was the order of the day. The current generation have not really are, do not fear anything because they have not been accustomed to that environment of fear. And it's the, one of the reasons they call themselves fearless. So I think Raila Amolo Odinga has made a very big tactical mistake and still he has that opportunity to retract it so as to return the trust that people had in him. In fact, he is the only politician who has been associated with good governance and at least reform and the struggle of the Republic of Kenya. Now, coming together with an individual who is associated with corruption, uh, poor leadership, and neglect of their responsibility by just building plans uh, every, every each other day, do you think that the Gen Z's are just stupid to fall into that trap? The fact is this, Raila Amolo Odinga and Dr. William Samuel Ruto have been threatened by the common Mananchi, who they believe will not only wipe out Ruto, but it will wipe out the whole political class. And the fact that they have seen that this fight is not only against a specific political class, they now come together, they have regrouped to try and ensure they are able to cool down the temperatures and save themselves. Remember, if a revolution happens, it does not spare any of the political class. Usually, everything starts afresh. So, let us see how this will go on, but I emphasize that Raila Morodinga has an opportunity to retract that statement and just disassociate with himself with the Gen Z's because the Gen Z's are not represented by any specific person as a leader. In fact, uh, he's not a Gen Z. He's, I think, a Gen X, and the, the, despite the fact that he represents Gen, Gen Z's dream, and the Gen Z's believe in what he says, does not mean that they will just do each and everything that he tells them without thinking about its consequences and the incentive, what is actually pushing him to do that which he's doing at that particular time. So that is my view in regard to the reaction of the Gen Z's and the general population to Raila Amolo Odinga. And as I end, let me emphasize that if they are not keen, both Raila and Ruto will go home in the year 2027. Nobody will vote for them if they are not keen. Thank you so much for watching. Until we meet again, bye-bye.